final game on home field for the Brandon University Bobcats this MCAC season. The destination is the final four. Bobcats are going to be bound for that. Will they be the number one seed? They got work to do in order to make sure that that is going to be the position that they're going to be in as they pursue another possible league championship. T. Cray, Mr. Harrison alongside for the broadcast. And Dan, these two teams have developed that rivalry, the R word, and we could see a little bit more of that here this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, these teams have been uh, battling hard against each other all season long. I think they're one, one draw and then BU lost the, the following match. So I think uh, there's a bit of, bit of rivalry, not only this season, but in the program's history, I know I was a part of that. And um, facing CMU was kind of special because they're a very disciplined team. Um, they're a very well-coached team. Um, and yeah, that discipline goes a long way when you face them, nothing really rattles them. Um, but they're always emotionally invested into the game. So this should be a very intense game. BU coming off a pretty convincing win against St. Boniface last weekend on home soil. And now they're looking to do the same here against a, a tough CMU team that's final four bound, I believe as well, in the middle of the standings, sitting in third. And um, yeah, we got, we got playoffs coming Pretty, pretty quickly, so this will be a, a test as we move into the Final Four. Yeah, next Saturday, Sunday, that's the championship weekend hosted by these CMU Blazers. And as the standings look right now, you have Providence, the Pilots, with a game in hand on both brand and CMU. Of course, that'll be you know, a different story once this game is complete. But right now, the Pilots are eight, one and two. Brandon seven, one and two. The Blazers five, three and two on the year right now. The sun is starting to hopefully peak out here a little bit. It's been you know, basically mainly overcast the entire afternoon so far. Bobcat women's team won 1-0 over the Blazers a little bit earlier today to get the 10 wins on the conference campaign on the BU women's side of things. Finishing in first place, still a possibility. Regular season wraps up for the Bobcats tomorrow in Otterburn when they take on the Pilots. Ditto for the men's team as well. If they can take advantage of home field here and get a win tomorrow, they could be first place as well. So both BU teams could potentially be first place going into the MCAC Final Four weekend next Saturday, Sunday out in Winnipeg. Yeah, and that's that's a big uh, big thing for both both the women's and men's program here. Is we have uh, an interesting look coming into playoffs with both teams being first. I believe with a win today, um, BU can take first over Providence as they, they have the head-to-head -head matchup victories over Providence. So um, both teams are going to be looking for wins here to just um, just create a good atmosphere in the program as they head into the Final Four with a trip to Nationals on the line. Every team is going to be doing what they can to do what they can in the playoffs. And that can be pulling out victories in, in games that don't really mean too much. Scoring goals to boost the confidence and motivation of players. and Yeah, mo probably most of all is stay healthy. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, look, at I was just going to, you kind of lead into the next thing I just wanted to talk about. You got Ryder Anthony playing goalkeeper for the Bobcats. So is not playing. And then you, know, you look at last year, you know, Mateus ended up getting injured there. They didn't play the you know, the championship game. Yeah, and, uh, sure. so we got a couple. We got uh, Camilo Rodriguez, um, or known as Nano. He's not not on the field right now. We have Edwin on, um, so he's he's taking a bit of a rest right now. He might come on later, but I imagine he'd be he's going to be on limited minutes coming into the final weekend of play before playoffs. CMU though, we're going to be looking to go all out here for a win to give them a nice boost coming into the Final Four. Yeah, you got Christian Rodriguez out there. Yeah, Christian actually delivered my pizza to me the other day there. Oh, yeah. He's a whale of a, a delivery guy, so I gave him a really good review online, so who knows, maybe you know, Christian might get a raise after <laughs> the glowing review I gave him. Yeah. He said, yeah, knock the doorbell rang, opened up. T. Cray, here's your pizza. So I said, you're a fine gentleman. 
So you must have known it was your place before you yeah, actually got there. I guess so. Yeah. The glam there, number four for the Bobcats. Also come Drago. His old Victor Lamb. We'll have an interesting matchup to today. Um, CMU tactically have caused a bit of a couple problems for, for Brandon and their formation. So this should be a good matchup that um, has caused Brandon a headache or two in the regular season, but it'll be a good insight into the playoffs. And one player to watch for CMU is number seven here as he's kind of sprinting onto the camera right now. Number seven right there. Um, Osama Al-Ali who caused couple headaches up front for the uh, defenders of Brandon the last couple games. And one person for the Bobcats is uh, Edwin Ali, who's um, their, our striker, number 11 here, just at the middle of your screen there. He's quite tall, so he's he's been an issue for a couple teams using his height on set pieces, corner kicks, free kicks, crosses into dangerous areas. A couple of his goals this season have been as a result of his soaring head heading the ball into the back of the net. Zach Wood there, who has elected not to get a haircut this season and has a ponytail up top. <laughs> That's a style. Yeah, I think. I don't, right? I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. See a waving in the wind on the yeah. he leaves the camera there. So CMU looking to pressure Brandon off the off the off the ball here so they're looking to swing the ball as we hear a couple players from CMU say yeah normally the guys will kind of lead the way on the on commentary as to what to say because there's Blue Beetle that, that moved it up there too Carter Beeb there I've always got him as number number 17 on this list but he's number number seven for the cats yeah one uh, area that the Bobcats will be looking to improve today, especially, is uh, winning the ball in the air. It's one area they've lacked. This men's team has been winning the ball as it uh, comes either in the air or offset pieces in the air. There's a yellow card probably early on in the game. Yeah, and down. Zach Wood just letting his emotions get the best of him there as he chops down a CMU player. Getting a yellow card warning. Two yellow cards results in a red card and you're out of the game and your team is down one player. So unlike in hockey where it's a two minute penalty and the player can come back into the game. If you are penalized in soccer, you are out of the game completely and you cannot be replaced. So that's an early yellow card as we enter the seventh minute here. Yeah, that was Romain Francis. So there's a kick, it's up there's and gone. Offside flag is up, so that'll be an offside on the CMU Blazers. Off the free kick. That'll be something they'll be looking to avoid, especially off set pieces, it should never be offside. CMU always very disciplined, as I mentioned, tactically. They, they have a plan and they follow it to a T. Um, Offset pieces, free kicks, corner kicks, they always, they've always been strong with their practiced plays. So we'll see if Brandon can nullify that. Yeah, they're a team, Dan, that kind of scares you a little bit, to be honest with you, this, these Blazers. You know. Yeah, there's a saying of trusting the process, trust the process. This is the team that does that to a T. Trust the process. They have a, a tactic. They have a good coach and Mr. Anderson over there. And I believe he's from Brazil, a Brazilian, a fellow Brazilian. Um, to a couple of players on our team here, and he's a very gifted coach and gifted player. Yeah, the Blazers, they're not holding back. They don't sit back and wait. They just kind of pour it on you. This is kind of a stark contrast to when I played. When I played, CMU was very defensive. They sat back. They, they only really scored if you made a mistake and they could counterattack you. But now it's opposite. Anderson, coach for CMU, has kind of evolved his coaching to allow for CMU to play a little more complex 
tactically, and they've they've found the Bobcats' number a couple of times. Not to say that the Bobcats can't can't take it on, can't rise up to the challenges. Christian Rodriguez is looking to receive that pass from Frank. Yeah, big Frank there. He's working on the next Bobcat player profile is going to be on Big Frank there. And kind of exploring his journey from Ghana to BU. And there's Al Ali, who's been a men menace for CMU against the Bobcats. With tons of space, has a lot of pace, very quick. It'll be interesting to see that little piece you have on Frank. Yeah, he did a, it's already, I've got the interview done already. Just need to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together, but he, he did a really good job. Right. Edwin Ali here with a nice chip over the top for Christian Rodriguez, who's small in stature, but quick, quick in pace. Zach Wood now looking to play give and go there, but doesn't quite the fruition. And now Bobcats will be happy with his throw in in the CMU half. So here's Frank again. Remember, he scored. You and I were on the broadcast there. We were talking about this before we went on the air there, and Frank had that, that banger from just across midfield there. Yeah, I remember that I think vividly. I think there's still smoke in the air from, <laughs> from that goal. That was a, a heat-seeking missile that, that Frank kicked there. Julian Desongramel there, the pride of Notre Dame's got it. Number 14 for the Cats. Here's Zach Wood at it. Now it's kicked to the far corner of the field and out of play. Yeah, and Bobcats looking to pour on the pressure here. As a couple turnovers from CMU have resulted in a couple dangerous situations. BU looking to use some of those turnovers to create crosses and switches up the field. They've caught CMU out of position a couple times, but CMU are quick, so they're quick on the counterattack here. Let's we'll see what they can do with this one. A yeah, little feathered touch pass there that's picked up by the Blazers as they try to storm in there. Victor Andrade found himself some open real estate there, kicks it down, and it's not going to work out there for the Cats on that exchange. That's something that team you're going to have to be aware of that build up from the Bobcats with those passes, but also that over the top action. You can see Andrade sends that from about three quarters of the field away and puts it out of out of the end. So that over the top ball is going to be something to, to watch for. So the kick is up and on the way here. See who gets to it first. That went in the air ball challenge is what you kind of keyed on there, Daniel. And you can see how important it is. It keeps momentum shifted in your, your way, but it also just kind of thwarts the effort of, of CMU. They're happy with any balls over the top. It looks like they're looking for improvised soccer right now. So looking for counterattacks and just using the quick feet, the quick pace of their players to create chances. Now also before we went on air, there was a, a lady that stopped by here that said that you're the, the her favorite color commentator in the league, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Those weren't the words that she said. <laughs> <laughs> that's, she what I, that's what I heard. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that then. <laughs> <laughs> It's all about how you process what you hear and spit it out to, to be your own. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> now it's, uh, Bobcat pressure now, so you're going to be looking to just kick this up and let Ali do his business. Calvert moved it and he had a good kick there. Is it, I think it went into the dumpster. It did, yes. Yeah, so that's one goal for CMU. Yeah, exactly. This is going to be the unfortunate soul that has to Jump into that dumpster. Again. Pick that up. There's a big kick down here, so this might get, yeah, this will reach the 18 yard box. Edwin Ali. Yeah, Bartell is there. Big Zach. The bowling ball action for you there. 
JP. Matthew. JMU happy with their, with their possession game to play it out short like that. We'll see what they can do with it. Draw they looking to create something, but. Okay, gonna be a CMU ball here. Matt Paul. See how invested CMU is right now there. Uh, Dirk said it down to that one, yeah, got it between Drago and Andrade. Okay. Blazers got the job done there, got the yardage that they needed. Yeah, so we'll see what kind of final third offense they can create. They're going to get a shot off. So they're going to be a team that lacks any sort of creativity in the final third. Zach Wood now showing his quick footwork. Chris Rodriguez showing his pace and gets that ball over. A little too much weight on that. Well, Christian's been a real valuable member of this program. Yeah, he's he's a spark plug out there. Yeah, and he's he had a couple red shirt years with, when I was on the team and just soaked up as much information as he could tactically and worked on his skill. And now, yeah, he's a valuable asset for. Bobcats on, on the outside here. Look, you can see him. Zach Wood trying to keep up. Yeah, trying to find the edge there. And these guys are human, human battering rams out there so far here in the first 14 plus minutes of this game. And just to keep all the viewers and whatnot informed, the ball has been located inside the dumpster. The little kid jumped in there and, and found it. Push here by, I assume, Edwin Ali, who somehow managed to push and then rise up above everybody else to head it away. Now, I imagine we'll be looking to play it short here. As BU have numbers up the field. Oh, they're going to be looking to kick this. So this will be a 50 50 ball in the air. That he was going to be winning. Yeah, Lamb hit it initially, and then it was ricocheted off the back of Wood. We've got a player down here for. Hopefully, we have. It's Marabazi. Bit of a bit of a bump, more than anything. So that's. It's nothing too serious. Looks like yeah, he's up and walking around. So another throw in here, and it's MP that's got it right now for nice CMU. And man, makes a really dandy throw for sure. Osama Al Ali was the intended target off that throw in. Had it for the moment. And back the other way we go, trying to split the defenders and burst in there, get a shot on that. Could not. The Blazers gobbled up number 11, Edwin Ali. He's going to be the main striker, the main offensive force for the Bobcats. Camillo on the bench, and he's going to have a couple split responsibilities of being that striker that they can dump the ball to and send off to a race. And he's going to have to use his physical presence to just hold the ball up and let his team catch up to him. Yeah, Camillo leading the league in scoring, got 13 goals on the year to lead all scorers. Is that his second year in a row? Second year in a row, I do believe. Was the league MVP last year for regular season? Ryder Anthony in here. Bobcats will be looking to win that in the air. 50 50 ball, but that ball ends up going CMU's way, and now they're looking to punch this ball into the 18 yard box with numbers. Yeah, Lamb using his noggin there. Worked out well for him and his Bobcats. Dazon Grimmel moved it up towards midfield, right back in the Bobcat territory, and it's controlled by CMU. They're gonna double back one more time. Use the wing, and they're gonna bounce this outside again. There it is. Yeah, race, no, she's off the mark. Yeah, we should have we should have had a little marker down here, even down the street, you know, to keep track of ourselves here, those, those air ball plays, and who's kind of winning those you kind of stress them that that's going to be kind of a big factor in it. It's kind of good to know who's 
who's winning most of those battles as we go along. Yeah, and for the most part in this season, Bobcats have kind of just submitted the air game. So even if it's a 50-50 battle, I think uh, if they're winning half the balls in the air, that's going to be a win for the Bobcats. Most of their problems have come from not winning anything at all. Well, Blazers want something called, but ain't going to happen. Yeah, there's a good appeal for a handball there, but Jeff says no. Oh, not. and Frank's got to move in here and, and does. He dodged a major bullet there because the Blazers were breathing down Big Frank's neck there. Yeah, and we got Bobcats looking to use the width of the field now too, but CMU are up to the task. Both teams are looking to keep it wide and use their wingers and then cross it in. So here comes the CMU. I imagine this is going to... Bobcats are a team that have proven that they can use both the width of the field but also strings and spider web passes together in the middle of the field. CMU have relied a lot on that over the top action and using the width of their outside passes. There's a good attempt by Rafini to get that ball through to Christian Rodriguez. Rafini's got it back again here, makes a nice little pass and Woods got some room to work with, sends it towards the net. There's a header from Julian Desangramel. That's a tough one, your body's going backwards, so you're not gonna get too much pace on that towards the net, but he does a good job of heading that down to the ground to bounce that off the ground. Speaking as a goalkeeper, that's always the toughest ball to judge is a ball that's headed down to the ground at you. Edwin Ali doing a good job of disrupting this over the top ball that CMU wanna play. Ends up at the foot of Frank J. Now to Zongramel. Good idea there to get some space. Now yeah, Julian gets still them anyway, though. There. There's yeah. a corner kick. Yeah. Things are clicking for the Bobcats now. CMU. Last time CMU were here at the HLC, um, they started very strong. Both halves. The first 10, 15 minutes were very strong, and then they kind of teetered off. So we'll see if that happens again or if CMU can maintain this high quality play. Well, let's see what Drago can do here. Victor Lamb now on this far side of the field with Camillo out. He's going to be trying to curl this in. Nice ball, good corner. Oh, Edwin Ali skips over his head. It's Christian, he'll battle axe and it's caught by the goalkeeper for the Blazers. Game management from the goalkeeper here from CMU says we want to play quick. Like I kind of mentioned before, CMU are very good at improvising their plays, so. Although they're looking to use the width of the field once they get into some free space, they're very good with their feet. And here they're going to use the space to Edna, or to Al, Al, Al Ali, excuse me. Oh, there's a scramble for it. And Victor Andrade got uh, tangled up there. Yeah, ball's still at the feet of CMU. Well, the one-timer shot. No, 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 the mark though. Right, Anthony never worried about that, but you can see the importance of Al Ali up front for CMU. He's quick, but also he's, he's got some skill with his feet. He knows the game. For you veterans at home, he, he fell in the box looking to get the ref to call a penalty, but the ref was... Not seeing anything of it. Another good old fashioned foot raise for it that the Blazers get. Woods right there though to try to put an end to it. Yeah, this is good pressure by the Bobcats. They gotta make sure there's no outlet here on the sideline. Rafini too slow to get there though. Now see him, you get to progress all the way up the field. And Shabati there, moved it over and ends up. But Lamb ended up taking the shot. And Sent that out of play. I think if the Bobcats stop that initial pass to the sideline, it'll it'll thwart a lot of the effort from CMU. They don't play through the middle. There's a borderline foul that doesn't get called, so Bobcats are looking to counter with numbers now. Ooh. 
Drop, you'll see. Drop, drop, drop. You'll see him. You get the ball to number 20 here on the side. Creates all the offense for. For them. And Frank and Jay kicks it right back at the Blazers. The header that gets it towards midfield. Blue Beetle gets in there. Another header. Here we go. Here go the Blazers again. Looks like they got a little. Uh, no. Victor Lamb is. Kind of got into the thick of things there to stop that chance for, for CMU. Watch over, Matthew, over. Here comes Victor Lamb with the big throw, important throw to get this out of harm's way. And it just sneaks out for another Bobcat throw in, so it shifts everybody down the field. Mission accomplished. Four now. Well, we'll scout the situation. Yeah, you might as well go to the tallest guy on the field if you can. Probably That's, by a foot, too. He's yeah, the, the human skyscraper there. Frank using his noggin to advance it. That one's kicked into the, into the steel cage over there with the Zongramel of the Bobcats in the vicinity. Yeah, Edwin Ali just doing a good job having a presence up top. So when CMU get in trouble, they can't pass it back to their defenders because he's already there. Here's a good ball over the top. Christian Rodriguez, a handball that doesn't get called. There's no way that doesn't hit any part other than his hands after the bounce, but the ref says maybe they were Right tight to his body. And look at this here. He got CMU maybe gets a, a bit of a break and looked like they had the Bobcats right where they wanted them there for a second. Yeah, Bobcats. That's a giveaway there by Carter Weeb, who had all the lead right on his tail, forcing him to make a, an accurate pass. So you don't always have to get the ball, but your job can be just to pressure people into making bad decisions. There's a shot here from John Paul, and that goes wide. Ryder Anthony never really concerned about it. See what CMU do here off the goal kick. Looks like all Ali is staying up high, so they're going to pressure this pass. Yeah. waving everybody up. So is Ryder Anthony ready to kick this over the top? CMU not letting Brandon build up at all with short passing. Header by CMU, then another one. That, that air attack again, Frank Ajay leans into that one and kicks it all the way down to Blazer territory. And just casually allowing that one to go right into his mitts was goalkeeper Bartel for CMU. Long ball over the top. <laughs> that bounced at the last second. Almost able to be kept in bounds, but ends up being a Bobcat throw in. See, the first intuition for CMU is just to play it out wide, get it out wide, and we'll create a play from there. Rodriguez got it, Lamb was there too. Again, again. Paul that's kind of towering over Rodriguez there on that last exchange. Here's Frank going toe to toe with Romain Francis for the Blazers. Blue Beetle, had a chance at it. Couldn't corral it. Blazers are gonna get another opportunity here potentially. Here comes CMU now. Good tackle there by Zach Wood, just tying up John Paul to not let him get any space for a pass. That's a good tackle there by Zach Wood, an important one in a dangerous area. Victor Lamb now scouting out, only sees... Looks one way and then the other here, and trying to go to the skyscraper, hopped over the top of him. Dirksen's there, number two. And they're going to let the goalkeeper take it. <laughs> He's a brave soul. That one goes smack off the top of the back of Christian Rodriguez, and this one's going to go air mail it over to Clark Hall. Yeah, I'd say both strikers of both these teams are doing a good job of just having that presence of, of knowing that if I'm here, then they aren't, they aren't going to pass in my vicinity at all. Edwin Ali doing a good job there. CMU had to kick it out. 
because he was just lingering around. And Al Ali doing a good job for CMU, just not letting them pass back when they are in trouble. So about 28 minutes played here in this first half. No real threatening opportunities mm -hmm. yet. No, nothing, but nothing I think, to brag about anyway, that's for sure. I think we've been about one pass away a couple of times from a dangerous situation or two. Frank Jay with a good slide tackle, anticipation of that move there. There's a big, oh, that's a dangerous tackle for Zach Wood because he's on a yellow. Yeah, that was Umar there that's down in this discomfort here. Now the ref letting him know, I'm aware that you're on a second yellow. You did get the ball there, but you can't follow through like that. We got a replay here. Let's take a look here. Touched by Ruffini and then Zach Wood just going in at the same time. And yeah, that's a tough one. You know what, that, you know, what that, should, kinda... that should be a foul. You think so? The foul should mm. definitely be given there. Yellow card, I, it, it depends on the ref. I can, I could see a yellow card being given there. I could also see it not being given. Yeah, I, I yeah, I agree with you that there probably should be a foul, but no, no yellow card. I don't think there was any in, real intent or anything. You're, it's kind of one of those bang boom plays, you know. And you can see Zach Wood kind of wound up as he knew the ball was going there. He was he wound up to kick it, to time it so he would get the ball. So no ill intent there, I think. Ref allows play to continue. But I'm sure as a player, once you get one of those yellow cards uh, placed on your shoulder, it, uh, it, you get a little bit nervous about the next one possibly coming. Yeah, well. Especially now, at this time of year, you don't want to be yeah, that red card getting too crazy. Comes with a one game suspension, I believe. So it comes with more than just putting your team down one player. Zach Woods, his play style will definitely change, and you can see already he's been less present in the game, and here's a lucky bounce that Marshall is able to scoop up. Oh yeah, well I'm sure it, it kind of brings a little bit of, uh, being a little bit too, maybe not honestly too tentative, just a little bit of tentative if you get that, but you don't want it to happen again. Yeah, so he's, his whole position revolves around being aggressive in the middle of the field, and he can't do that now. It's one unfortunate bounce, and he's on that second yellow. If the ball doesn't get cleared well, Wood Zach Wood tries to head it back in. Yeah, Christian's got, he's got fancy footwork there. Yeah, he's just trying to wedge his way between those two Blazer players and keep the play going. Could not there. And that one initially skimmed off the shin of Wood. It's out, it's out on him, it's out on him. So this will be interesting to see. See how CMU had numbers on the side here. Now they're looking to switch the field, I think. To get it to the other side of the field. So they're tactically avoiding the middle of the field. Comes a free kick, no doubt coming into the 18 yard box. So, Ryder Anthony will be eager to come off his line right now. He's telling his line to push up. Don't let them sink down into our area. Let me be able to come out and catch this. This shot's on net, I think. Ooh. It was looking good there for a while, wasn't it? Yeah, it just went wide. It had the. It was sinking. It was sinking into nothingness. Andrade over the top, getting his, his teammates out of trouble. Yeah, Dirksen with the header, sends it right back. In the here. middle, and Frank and Jay goes down, and that's a foul, yeah. Typically in those battles, the first one to fall gets the call. Jabati yeah. now looking up the field, looking at Edwin Ali, maybe Christian Rodriguez. Feeney and Zach Wood are up the field too, so. Jabati's kick. Goes off Wood. Wood's got it again. Feeney doing a good job boxing out. And just in the middle of the pack there, looking to create some havoc. And Carter Weeb. Get to play some possession passes, but it's intercepted. Oh, a little bit more slip and slide action there. And 
Francis sets down and play continues in CMU territory. Good anticipation there by Carter Weeb. Here we go with Bobcat throwing on the far side. Rafini has the ball looking to switch. No, Zach Woods open in the middle. Tries to thread the needle to, to Zongramal who just couldn't meet him there. Zach Wood put a little too much pace on that one. Bit of spark here for, bit of a spark for the Bobcats. Now we have a goal kick. Looks like CMU might be looking to play this short. No, nope. waved off. So this will be a ball over the top. See if the Bobcats can continue to win it in the air. Bad kick there. That's a unfortunate kick. Oh, good nice. idea there by Edwin Ali heading that back to Christian Rodriguez. Team, you are able to clear. Header by Lamb. Another ditto by Umar there. Blazers. See here, CMU you have possession in the middle of the field. They're going to play this out wide though. Yeah. See, there's no luck. No luck in the middle of the field. Bobcats are doing a good job of clogging it up, and I think CMU are aware that that's their tactic, so they're going to be looking to play out wide every possession that they can get. That's Riley Chalmers, number three, that chops it up ahead. There's that ball on the sideline now. Frank this does the right thing and gets it out of there. Switch of the ball, yeah, switch of the field. Puts it out wide again. It's a good idea from CMU. Just a bit too much pace on that ball. So let little Victor do here. Matt Paul with the header. Julian DeZongramel tried to do it. Frank and Jay at his feet. There's Wood moving it over to Ruffini. Ruffini gets tangled up in the spider's web. Here come the Blazers until Blue Beetle kicks it at our athletic therapist, Shad. Good hands on Shad there. Yeah, absolutely. That ball from smacking him or his trainee. We got a player warming up on CMU's bench, so we might see a substitution right away, but not before. Bobcats are looking to spring out here. Lee trying to win that showdown, could not. Blazers one more time. Mr. Chibati in the mix there too. All the way down on the Brandon side and Blazers winning that, getting around that edge to win that first showdown there and try it on the other side now with Christian Rodriguez having to go toe to toe with Paul. Paul's going to be looking across this in. Looks like we have maybe an injury on the far side there. Not to see the number, but he looks like he's up and okay. It could be number eight or nine, Umar. Aaron, get ready. Big throw. Ooh, Blazers throw it in Shabati. Got it out of there. Blazers still trying to hem in the Cats. Andrade with the header. Got to play it goes. So chance in the corner here for the visitors. Yeah, CMU. We'll see if they have somebody able to take this with their left foot. Get a bit, a bit of a, a curl in there. Looks like it's going to be all Ali after he kisses the ball there. With a little bit of luck off his lips. Can he <laughs> get this on his teammate's head? So here it comes. That's a good low spinning. Corner. Yeah, Frank and Jay saw it all the way. The foot race for it now. Yeah, and there's CMU just happy with the clearance out, out the side. Both Christian and Edwin Ali were both ready, willing, and able to pounce on that. Brooks got it, sends it back to co captain Chabatti. Oh, Nathan just slipped there. Oh, this is. And right back the other way with the oh. numbers and a great stop and a great kick save. Ryder Anthony, ice water in his veins here. Great save there. That's he, he might have woken the beast there in Ryder Anthony and 
Yeah. Old chew there, just the slip there. Yeah, just Again, that a hoof that was just a little too high for where the ball was, I think. And that could be the spark that the Bobcats need because Edwin Ali now is going to be holding up this ball to unsuccessfully hold it up for his team now gives it away. And Dirksen passes it. Over to drop back here. Ali. Drop back. Yes. Oh, some space in the middle that's going to be a wasted chance there. At Romain Francis, number number eight there for the Blazers. Yeah, Ryder, nice kick save. He's on full alert there. Yeah, and that's as much of an anticipation save as a reaction save. He purposely sprawled out that way to block off that corner of the net. Oh, here's another chance. And there's an opening goal for the CMU Blazers. Yeah, just when Ryder makes one spectacular save, unfortunately, then you right back the other way. Blazers just kept on fighting, kept on pushing there. Yeah, that's a good contact there by Jordan Calvert as he puts it in the opposite side of where Ryder Anthony was anticipating it going. Yeah, you stole the words right out of my mouth. I said he, Ryder was going one way and the ball went the, went the other. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. That was two good opportunities at the top of the 18 yard box that the Bobcats kind of just gave away. Maybe a little lapse of judgment. Maybe just a forgotten job. Well, that's, that's what I was t telling you, Dan. I didn't say it just to make myself sound dramatic, that this is a, this CMU team scares you because they keep coming after you. Yeah. And, and there you go. And they cash one in there on, on the Cats. Yeah, and the CMU Blazers are very, very skilled. They have a good skilled team this year. And not only are they disciplined, like I mentioned before with their tactics, and they stick to their game plan, but their skillful footwork can get them a long way as well, and that combination can be lethal, and it's found the, the number for the Bobcats. Well, this Romain Francis, number eight's looked pretty good. He's had some good good chances, and that might be the furthest I've ever saw a soccer ball. That's almost, uh, that's way down there. Yeah, we got a <laughs> daring volunteer running into traffic. And After traffic has stopped for him, and he's, he's gobbled that up, and he's racing back over here. But we'll see how the Bobcats can come back, as you know they haven't really been able to maintain too much possession here with the CMU Blazers looking to get a second as they sprung on the counterattack, but ultimately thwarted by their own hand as a handball is called here. Well, you know, uh, Daniel, there's been games where Bobcats have held leads and they and they haven't been able to, to close them out. They had that, I think that was against Providence there where they gave up that that last second goal in extra time just to earn a draw out of the deal. And yeah, yeah things haven't exactly come easy for, for BU this year. And, and I don't necessarily think that that's entirely a bad thing. I think it's good sometimes when you got to face a little bit of adversity over the course of a, of a regular season so that when things in the playoffs don't go your way, you, you don't fold up like a like a cheap tent. Yeah, and CMU has always been a team, like I talked about, they're very disciplined but skillful, whereas Providence may be a bit more of a physical battle. Bon St. Bonif is more of an emotional battle. So, yeah, with this CMU team, just from what I kind of see, to me, it's kind of, it's a little bit of a sprinkling of both. It's both the, they got players that push you physically and then also that can wear on you mentally too. Yeah, they're, uh, they're a team that kind of has all facets of the game going for them right now. And we'll see if the Bobcats can string a couple things together. They've been one or two passes away from getting shot on net or Something dangerous going for them as Zach Woods looking across the sin can't quite get around John Paul. I just kind of look at the, that the two moments that we just kind of saw here. Ryder makes that that big kick save. You would have thought that that would have been the spark that that was maybe going to ignite the Bobcats. And then you see CMU not get phased from him making that big save, and then they get the goal. Yeah, and that's on one side of the 
the coin, that's definitely true, but that could be seen as the Blazers finally getting that shot on net mm -hmm. and sparking them and saying, you know what, they're human. We can we can get shots on nets on these guys. So them being able to get a shot inspires them a bit. It gets them that second shot, which ultimately goes in. Uh, that stretches out CMU, and now they're looking to uncontested head that ball down. There's a Bobcat throw coming up here, and Bobcats are looking a bit rattled, but we have Frank Ajay out there trying to calm things down. You see him motioning to his teammates, just relax. Lots of time left. Ball still in play on that far sideline. Rafini now looking to maintain possession. There's a good tackle there. Now we're getting a bit physical here as the motions are running high. Yeah, you can see Frank out there. Do it. There you go. That's exactly what you, you see the game good there, Dan. That's why we, we keep bringing you back game in, game out, buddy, because you could just saw Frank there getting with Ruffini there, just telling him, this, let's get out of here, man. Let's go talk about something else. Yeah, one wrong, wrong word to the ref, and that can, that can show you a card, so. Ref uh, indicating two more minutes left. One minute of extra, extra time. There's a good floating ball in, headed away by Drade, but can't be controlled there by Al Ali. Yeah, he's, to me, he's he's been maybe the most impressive player on the field here so far has been Al Ali. Yeah, not only is his gameplay, but his tactical awareness, his presence. He's in the right spots, not only to receive the ball, but to prevent Bobcats from passing back or trying to switch the field. So he's, he's putting pressure in the, all, in, in the right places and making passes in the right places too. Over, over. Well, it's like he's got magnets on the tips of those, of those soccer shoes. He doesn't let the ball get away from him when he gets a touch on it. And Ali now doing a good job boxing out there and now have John Paul facing okay, the there's his own net. On a Ooh, there's a pass that just slides through the feet of Rodriguez. Zach Wood not happy with that touch, puts it out. Bobcats are looking frustrated right now. Uh, you know what? I, I was you just boom. I was just gonna say. I said the, I don't like the look of the Bobcats' body language out there right now. Some of their veteran players are looking frustrated. Yes, which is I, something that I'm not going to say no. who I think it is, but yes. you can see it out there for sure. That's why I think from a, if you're a Bobcat supporter, you just want to get out of this first half down one nil and, and try to get regrouped for the second. And there's a free kick that's going to ease the tension from Zach Woods there as he's. Battling hard and finally gets a call going his way. Rafini now gonna step over this and put this into a dangerous spot. Edwin Ali, I imagine, is his target. Could be Victor Andrade, number 20, as he runs into the frame there. And any of the defenders as they rush up. Well, let's see what'll happen here. This hat, it looks like it's right on target there. Oh. Went through the swarm of, of bodies there. Yeah, that'll be a CMU goal kick, so. Maybe didn't touch anybody, maybe touched the Bobcat on the way out, and now it'll be a... Yeah, might have gone clean through. Goal kick to waste a bit more time off this looming whistle to end the first half. Three seconds left, according to the ref's last two-minute warning. And smack off Blue Beetle, and there's there's that double whistle. Yeah, so Bobcat's down one nothing at the end of this first half to... Uh, very promising looking CMU Blazer side. And we'll be right back with the second half of this men's soccer game day action. How's it going?
back to our second half action here of the MCAC men's soccer season. Final weekend, um, we have CMU Blazers ahead of the Brandon University Bobcats. One to nothing, one to nil with a, um, ah, I wouldn't say late first half goal, but a, a goal that came later in the first half and kind of sparked the CMU Blazers, rewarded them for uh, a hard, hard fought first half as we have the Bobcats now just having that lengthy team talk as they get things going here for the second half. I imagine they might have some substitutions. I believe I saw Camilo Rodriguez take off his warm-up jersey and put on the captain's armband. So he might be coming on and we might have a different lineup for the Bobcats as they try to figure out um, the CMU Blazers and their um, confident and quick um, men's soccer team. Yeah, we see Camilo Rodriguez come on and any other substitutions. No, it looks like that's the only change. Ryder Anthony still in net there. And we have Al Ali for the CMU Blazers pumping up his team, yelling positive thoughts, positive ideas as we are about to get kickoff underway here for a match between the CMU Blazers, who are third in the MCAC men's soccer standings against the second place Brent University Bobcats. Both teams are looking to solidify their position in the standings. They both locked up a position in the final four, but we have only two more game days left today and tomorrow to see the resulting final four teams. Throwing on the far side gives Zach Woods possession of the ball for the Bobcats deep in CMU territory. It looks like that's going to be cleared out here by CMU as Umar is bringing it up for the Blazers. Bobcats regain possession of the ball through Rafini. Can't quite turn a pass there and is intercepted by John Paul. Camilo Rodriguez now finally getting a couple touches on the ball. Ball played out wide to Carter Weep, who's got a lot of space looking across this in. Doesn't quite find the mark, and Umar is able to head that out. Camilo Rodriguez boxing out that ball, and delayed call there by the linesman, as the ball did cross out the sideline. Carter Weeb's going to be throwing this in for the Bobcats. Oh, pulled down is Camilo Rodriguez, as he's looking for a call from either the linesman or the ref, and doesn't get it, so the ball Rolls out the end for a CMU goal kick. Blazers have looked quite strong in the first half and in the beginning of the second half as they have utilized the width of the field quite well. A lot of their um, progression or offense in this soccer game has come through passing out the side of the field through their wingers up to their striker, Al Ali, who's done a great job of just causing panic and um, concern for the defenders of the Bobcats. Bobcats haven't really had too much time in the CMU end, and as I say that, Carter Weeb tries to streak in for a cross inside the 18-yard box. As he rushes back for his second effort, is able to thwart the clearance from the Blazers. We're going to be taking the time and getting this ball back into play. So we have Karim now throwing this in just over the halfway line there. And we have, it's going to be a CMU throw as we have a couple of appeals for a foul. Malali now appealing to the Bobcats and just settling down their physicality, but imagine we're going to see an emotional Emotional second half here. Because we have a Bobcat throwing on the near side. We're going to welcome back Tigre. I am back. You're out of breath. I am. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. Life couldn't be much better. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Saw you hustling over here. And yeah. Although we've had no real action. We missed you. He did, did you? Uh, yeah. You're the first person to ever say that to me, so I'm quite pleased. Just as we say that, we got a throw in on the far side. Looks like it snuck out of play before Victor Andrade could 
boot that clearance up. Just yeah. to update you, D. Craig, Bobcats spent quite a bit of time in the CMU end. Uh, unsuccessful in putting them all in the back of the net, but a couple of good crosses and a bit of possession in the CMU half. Well, the big thing for me, and again, this is talking for, with a Brandon tongue and all, is just making sure that the Cats have got the right body language here in this in this second half. Yeah, and uh, I imagine there might have been some shuffling around. Uh, Camilo Rodriguez has been um, subbed on, so he's he came on with the second half whistle. And yeah, just as you said, there as the first half ended, there was a couple heads down and. Uh, frustrated faces there for the Bobcats, and oh, that ball's headed just over top of the crossbar. Yeah, CMU's coming. They can smell blood in the water here. Yeah, and kind of, as I mentioned before, those free kicks and corner kicks are going to be their their bread and butter. They've they've always had good set plays and um, good aerial attacks. So Bobcats did a great job in the first half of controlling the air battles, winning about half. But here, as you can see. We have CMU wide open, receiving that ball in the air. Bobcats just not able to find their position defensively as we have a couple CMU players just out in open space. And here comes, oh, a good touch away there by Ryder Anthony as he's able to anticipate that rolling ball after a great cross in there by CMU. Yeah, this is kind of looking like the Ryder Anthony of old there when he was an MCAC All-Star there a couple of years ago. Yeah, here's Al Ali now with the corner kick, kisses the ball as he usually does. And now yeah, I kind of like that little little trademark there of his. Just hopefully it's not a mud ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it works for you, keep on giving her a smooch, I always say. Yeah, and here's another corner kick for CMU intentionally putting that off a Bobcat player. As there was no real threat of a quality cross. They just want to get possession of the corner kick here. Now, all of these going to be on his good foot with the ball curling into him. We have Umar in front of Ryder Anthony there. Won't be able to block his path. Yeah, before he kicks it, he kind of does a little, a little shuffle, a little side shuffle. Oh, we have people grabbing at the ref. <laughs> point out that the linesman has his flag up. Maybe indicating a handball inside the 18 yard box, would, which would result in a penalty. Yeah, there it is. So this will be a handball against the Bobcats inside the 18 yard box, which will be a penalty kick. Wow. Yeah. Feeney now appealing to the linesman, although it's going to be a wasted appeal of the situation and the resulting handball. So all Ali now standing over top of this gives it the old kiss and his teammate patting him on the back saying, you got this, Ryder Anthony doing his best. As a keeper, this is your time to play mind games. Stay off your line, delay, make eye contact with the shooter. Now we're going to have Ryder Anthony do his best at anticipating, but also just, oh, Ali takes it and gives it to. Yeah, Noah Schindel, I think, is maybe going to. Yeah, fresh substitution, I believe, in the second half. So I'm going to say this is going into Carter, or no, Ryder Anthony's left side, so the far side of the net. I was just going to say the same thing. I think it's going left. Nah, I'm going to change. I'm going to say right. I'm going to say he's usually with the way he's lining up, you're going to curl it into that left side. But oh, here's Rafini now getting a yellow card for, I believe, the talk that he had with the linesman. He may have said a couple words that were inappropriate. So I'm going to say he's going into Ryder Anthony's right, which is the near side of the net for us. the way you're lined up right now, you're indicating you're going to curl it in to the far side. But I'm oh, yeah, sorry. He's playing my sorry. I, I'm thinking that, so I'm, the way I'm facing, yeah, it's it's going to go left, to my left. Okay. As I, yeah. Let's oh, see yeah. here. Definitely going left. Nope. Oh, and he faked him right out. 
So we're thinking one way and they go the other and it's two nothing CMU and this Blazers team there, you shouldn't be smoking, but figuratively they are. Yeah, they're hot right now. <laughs> Probably, yeah, this is probably riding high too. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I don't know. But here's a look at the replay here. Good job, guys in the truck and all. Good job with the replays. So his body language was completely exactly. telling him to go yeah. to that other side mm -hmm. and at the last second. Yeah. So two nil now. Wow. Just like that. And since the beginning, the CMU Blazers have had that momentum going their way. They've been the more confident team. They've been the more Productive I, team. I agree with you 100%. Just the way that the game started off, it looked like CMU was was a little bit more aggressive than the Bobcats. Yeah, and uh, I spoke with briefly okay, with and, Bryson yeah. Haywood. Got to be careful here. Bartell just got in the mix there with with Camillo there. Yeah, Camillo's great at just drawing drawing fouls and raising the blood pressure of his opponents. Frank and Jay tried to go with the header. Well, the Cats have got there, and all the Lee is down there as, as play continues. It's you know, got a player down for the, the Bobcats, too, in, in Christian Rodriguez. Yeah, so now we have a couple of players, I think, just being hit with the follow through of the ball, so nothing, nothing intentional, but we got a couple couple scenarios that the ref decided to let play and now the Bobcats are looking to put this inside the 18 yard box. Ruffini with a nice floating kick. Almost finds the foot of Frank J and Victor Lamb has to kick that from behind him over top of the net and wide. Yeah, I don't mind the Bobcats having to go through some of this stuff though, like I told you before. Builds, builds character. I kind of think having to Pick yourself out of the mud pits a, a good thing sometimes. Yeah. Main thing is though that they can they can pick themselves up and figure things out because if they can't figure out how CMU is beating them and how to counter it, then all that character building is for nothing. That's the magic of sports, I suppose. And that's yeah, that's that's the coaching part that has to come into play here. Here we have CMU with the throw in inside the Brandon half. We have Al Ali now receiving that header. Now maybe a shot by John Paul here. Tries to put it on his good right foot. Unable to get that shot off. So it's blocked by a couple Bobcats and urgency to clear this ball out is uh, another and uh, Blazers pleading for a call. Ain't gonna happen there for him and the Cats. And yeah. all the leaves in hot pursuit. Like a bull in a china shop, he really wants it here. We got him. Well, Dad, you might have, <laughs> you, you hinted at it that this game may, it's like a powder keg here. And yeah, so we have a couple of a couple of motions running high, and we have the ref and linesman having a talk about maybe some offensive words that were, were said, and some missed calls, maybe rising some blood pressures or body temperatures. Uh -huh. I think it's all all those things and more. I would I would assume. Okay, looks like a free kick for the Blazers now as play resumes. Maybe an offside call there. Not sure. Because again, we have Al Ali just causing havoc. He's doing a good job of managing the game, but also just being being a menace, being annoying. Yeah, well, he's kind of defines what the CMU team's kind of, what I've kind of gathered anyway from the, the few games that I've saw is that he's tiring on you physically and he can wear on you mentally. Yeah, he's a player that's kind of what's what's happened to BU in this game here to this point. There's still lots of time to get back in it, but yeah, he's he's not some he's somebody that doesn't need to have the ball to make a big difference on the game. So he's he's there pressuring you when you have the ball. He's there in the right spots. 
looking like a threat when he doesn't have the ball. And when he has the ball, he has the skill set to put the ball in the right spot. And now we have Ali in the middle of a scuffle here with somebody from the Bobcats. I think it might be Big Frank. Yeah, we don't need a battle royale out here before the championship weekend. Yeah, so that'll be the job of the captains and the veteran players is to keep your cool, you know. We have the final four coming up. Although we want to win the game, we're competitors. We want to make sure that we look at the long term. Bobcats now trying to progress their way out of trouble. All Ali just staying right beside Victor Andrade, just being that presence at the back that that won't let the defenders breathe or be able to think about anything. Most of the talking here on the field is, if not all the talking on the field here, is the CMU Blazers. They're yes. just talking to themselves, communication, positive words. So the Bobcats are in a hole right now. They're just deflated. Yeah, the, they got the Bobcats by the throat here. There's no, no other way to describe it than that. Yeah, and this is kind of what I mentioned earlier. The CMU is very disciplined in their tactic, but they bring intensity and they bring that never die attitude. Rafini tries to advance, and here goes Camilo Rodriguez. First ever Brandon University men's soccer all Canadian. He gets tripped up, and he yeah. wants a call. Yeah, that should be a yellow card, if anything, because he didn't get the ball at all. Yeah, looks like no card being given here. Well, what concerns me about the way that this game's starting to flow is that, number one, you run the risk of getting yellow cards and getting suspended. And number two, if things get, to, and I love the physicality of it at all, but someone ends up getting injured because of some of a over emotional reaction. It can spell doom for a team's chance at wanting to win a championship next weekend. Yeah, and that's definitely weighing on the minds of both teams right now as they're both, I believe, final f bound to the final four. Yeah. And we have emotions running high. And that's that's the tactic of, of some of these teams in, in the MCAC. That they, they can play that emotional game and get under your skin and force you to make mistakes. That's gonna work in their advantage. Here's Frank, who rises to the occasion. And here comes Zach Wood. Wood moves it up to Camillo. And trying to do the little matrix action there, but, but to no avail. Yeah, and Bobcats do get a throw in out of this, and we'll see what magic they can create. They're looking to pass it back here and maybe switch the ball, but here comes Al Ali to cause that havoc, and now they are unable to find a a solution to this, so they have to boot it away and hope to win it in the air. Lamb keeps it on ground control. Drago gets it right back here. Throws it over to Victor Andrade. Frank trying to win the foot race, sliding, able to corral it. Moves it on up, Edward Ali, and he is down. But gets up quickly. Camillo sailed over the top of his head. He's gonna look for that left foot, doesn't find it, and that's defended well by the Blazers. Unable to get it out though, and possession goes back to the Bobcats. They're gonna look to send it back in. And here are the CMU Blazers talking to each other, yelling. Communication is key, especially when you're defending. There's a high kick that has to be whistled down. That's in a dangerous spot. Yeah, Blue Beetle getting in the mix there. Yeah, there has to be 
A yellow card shown at some point. Just like you said, tempers, emotions can run high and people can be over emotional and as a result can inflict some harm on others. And one way to control that is through yellow cards, red cards, in the morning so that they can't play like that with the threat of being kicked out of the game. So they've got a three, four, four man wall here. Yeah, I'd say no less than four here because we know that this is going to be, you have to assume it's a shot from this, this range. This is probably going to go into the near side of the net. Here she goes comes. Far side, can't quite bend it enough and never really stood a chance, didn't have enough on it. Oh, yeah, players I saw, and BU players yeah, just talking to each other. I, I kind of saw something, but I might, I don't know if I'll say what it was, but anyway. It wasn't anything outrageous, but it's uh, <laughs> one of those things that's kind of stirring the pot a little bit. Yeah, let's just put it that way. It's definitely one of his <laughs> jobs out there. He's not the biggest guy, all Ali, but he's, he's a guy that can get under your skin, kind of like Camillo can. And, there's a call that goes against Camillo, and I would say those are two similar players. Al Ali from number seven for the CMU Blazers and Camillo Rodriguez. Yes, they're, they're cut from the same cloth a little bit. Yeah. And you appreciate the cloth it's cut from for sure, so. Yeah, it's definitely important to have somebody like that on your team. You'd rather have them on your team than play against oh, them. Oh, yes. There's a yeah, towering kick. kick. Ryder Anthony deciding not to come out and play that. Victor yeah, Drago was there to get it out of there. This will be a corner kick. I imagine taken by all Ali. He's going to take his time, waste as much time off the clock as he can with his team being up two goals. I imagine he's going to give that ball a kiss. Well, it's been working for him, hasn't it? Yeah, there's the kiss. <laughs> All right, here's his corner. This will be a nice corner curling away from the net, but has enough pace that... Well, pinball action, and somehow the Bobcats dodge a bullet here. And still going to belong to... No, it's going to be Bobcat ball. Yeah, ball comes in quick. Chabati and Weaver are going to play the 2v1 to get out of trouble here. CMU are quick to throw in numbers on this near side. So Frank will scout the situation here and he'll leave it alone for Mr. Nathan Chibati. Sends it across to Victor Andrade. Yeah, we have game that needs to be played, I believe, through the middle for the Bobcats in order for them to find success. They can't play it out wide because that's where CMU are looking to, looking to play as well. So they're going to be crowding the outside. What? Feathered pass, Frank, a J, Camilla Rodriguez, his first goal. There's a lefty all the way around there for the Bobcats. Yeah, there's an injection of a spark, if you will. Well, let's take a look at the replay here. Yeah, really like this nice little move that Frank makes. Look at that right there. Yeah, I would say that's unintentional, but Frank having a good enough touch just to slow it down. Makes and ooh, yeah. yeah. Camillo definitely picking out the middle of the legs for the, of the goalkeeper there, yeah, intentionally, because that's, you gotta have quick feet to be able to close those up. Yeah, whether Frank knew it or not, he, he kind of threaded the needle there for Camillo to finish that one off. Yeah, that was, to have a touch like that, even unintentionally is, is something that requires lots of practice, lots of skill. So now we'll see what the emotions do here. Yeah, now I think Bobcats are gonna be looking to play a bit more. So oh, that's through the middle, but just as I say, a foul goes against the Bobcats and a 
in a, in a pretty fortunate situation. A call goes against them to make it unfortunate. Now you can hear CMU kind of arguing with each other. Some of the defenders, so just like that, the switch can be flipped. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, it's funny what... Not a, not a lot of talking out here. How quickly things... Can... It's all about handling those emotions, isn't it? Yeah, being consistent and trusting in the process. Maybe we be pushed off the ball there, but getting a touch at the last second to make it a CMU throw in. Because I would say up until that that moment of the game, that CMU's been controlling things pretty well. Yeah, Brad. Bobcats haven't had a lot of success anywhere really on the field, but now. Now they know they can work through the middle a bit. Which has been the game plan for most of the season. Now we got a throw in here. They're going to hopefully look to do something. But no, CMU looking to put the pressure on theirs. It's another yellow card. I believe that's going to be a red card for Rafini, who's going to be out of the game now. Thank you. Thank you. So he's going to be out of the game, and nobody's going to be able to come on to replace. And here. Is yeah, and it all kind of started just with uh, unclean, not being clean in your own zone there. Yeah, and he's he saw that the CMU player was past him. He knew that he had no real chance of getting there to match him shoulder to shoulder, so he swipes at the ball and was hoping just to get a touch on it, but doesn't doesn't get a touch. Had he got a touch on the ball, who knows, maybe the ref would have just given the foul and nothing else. Yeah, just when you thought the, the Bobcats kind of were creeping back into this thing, then, then something like this happens. Yeah, we have, looks like a two-man wall. So Ryder Anthony, not too concerned about a shot here. He's confident in his abilities to stop it if it is. More concerned about a cross finding the head of a CMU player. It's low, and Frank's there to pick up the trash and get it out of there for the Cats. Yeah, that's a proper clearance. Put the ball all the way back. Now it's going to stretch BU out with 10 men, and that could be the game plan of the Blazers now. It's just to stretch out the Bobcats and play the numbers game. But here come the Bobcats now. Yeah, it's at the, the feet of the right guy here. Camilo Rodriguez sends it towards the front of the net. Yeah, nobody there to really pick that up, and now CMU are able to play the numbers game. Turn the ball down the field. All I'll leave it. Distributed it up to John Paul. Yeah, now look at lots of space in the middle. This is what CMU need to clog up. Because Brandon's going to try and play through the middle a bit, a bit more. Just as I say that, they go out wide, but immediately they're swarmed by four CMU players. Offside call, maybe? So, 2 1 game here, 72 minutes played. Looks like a free kick for the Bobcats here. So, this will be a nice little gift from the Blazers, giving them, giving the Bobcats a bit of life now. As we get the tall Edwin Ali for the Bobcats inside the 18 yard box on a free kick. Anytime he's in there, he can spell disaster for the oh, yes. other team. Well, Christian's the veteran here. He'll know what to do. He's going to put this up. He has to put a bit of pace on this ball. Here she there, comes. There's good pace on that. Edwin has to get up. Oh, Victor Lamb had the chance. The ball on his foot. Man. Yeah, Victor Lamb. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Paul was landed right on his foot, right beside the goalpost, but he just couldn't turn his body to put that ball in. Oh man. Yeah, caught him on the wrong side there. Yeah. So plenty of time in this game, despite how the players are acting. They're acting as though this is the final two, three minutes. We have about 17, 18 minutes left. Victor Lamb now charging up from his 
center back position. Seems to me the Cats are starting to kind of get back into their their style of game here, maybe a little bit more than than previous. Yeah, and you can see, look, it's Carter Weep streaking down the side there, just tracking back anybody who comes and Ryder Anthony. Side of the net. Yeah. yeah. Able to maybe get a touch on that. To yeah, I'm not too to sure or not if it was a clear clear hit off the side of the net or if or if Ryder got a piece of it along the way, he might have. Let's watch L he kissed the ball here. There it is. Good. Yeah, so I, don't think he, I don't think he scored off one of those yet, so maybe he well, might have to you know what? switch it up. Give it two kisses or something. Yeah. Here it comes. Good corner kick, curling ball with Ooh, a bit of pace. Eludes him, eludes the Blazers. He's got a player down as a lead, but he's back up on his feet. Okay, almost at 75 minutes played here. And what's, these two teams happen to cross pass come playoff time. I don't know. The, yeah, emotions will be running high. Might need to play that game on another planet somewhere. CMU taking their time getting this ball in. There's no urgency from them. They're up, they're leading. They don't want to waste time. Bobcats are looking to pressure now. Counterattack maybe. There's Edwin Ali now in a foot race with Chalmers. Yeah, kind of leading. Able to a little bit of a push there. It's, oh, and a thanks big save from Bartel getting his getting the oven mitts on there, catching the hot potato and getting it out of there. Yeah, and that's Edwin Ali at his finest, being physical, using that left foot to get shots off. And that now was, we have Christian oof. Rodriguez looking to put a scorcher of a corner in here. That was a good good save by, by Zach Bartel. There we go, Edwin Ali in the 18-yard box. All eyes will be on him. Christian sends it on up. Who's going to get it? Zach Wood, Edwin Ali, it's right there for the taking, and the Blazers bust it out of there. Blue Beetle with the header. As things start to intensify here at HLC Field. Yeah, and here comes CMU now with throw in in their own half. They're looking to progress up the field. Plenty of players on this sideline. They choose to go over the top, though, right into the Bobcats. Andrade advances it, but then glued right to the foot. Of Romain Francis. There's a gift there to Ryder Anthony, who will be happy to scoop this up and put it down quick. Fastball action. Tipping our cap to MLB playoffs on right now. Yes, 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 not letting him turn there, and there's turn over. Yeah, Wood with some willpower there. Just a, there's Frank with a banger, not enough. A cannon on it from the big guy. This is the urgency that the Bobcats needed at uh, kickoff of the first half. Yeah, many moons ago. But at least you're seeing some, oh, there's a, some signs of it. And that kick. Ooh, stays in play. Blue Beetle right on the doorstep. Yeah. And somehow stays in play. Wow, this is. Good effort there by the Blazers, and Ryder Anthony's got to move it here quickly. John Paul, though, in the middle. Zach Wood, Christian Rodriguez with speed. The veteran Bobcat. Does he got some magic dialed up here? That's going to be a corner kick, so that's a win in the Bobcats' book. They're happy with that. Everybody gets to come back down the field now in front of the, in front of the net. That puts all the CMU players in front of their own net, too, so. So Christian Rodriguez Ooh, that's a good one in there. Yeah, winning that air showdown, though, it was the Blazers there. A couple good headers from them to get it out of Dodge. Shabati with the chop. Ajay with the header. Victor Lamb. The pride of Minnedosa, slip and slide action. There's going to be a yellow card here from the ref to yeah. CMU player four there, so that's Cabrera getting his first yellow. And 
again, Bobcats will take this. They're happy with this. This ball gets to be put inside the 18 yard box with a bit of height. And Edwin Ali always being a threat aerially. Aerially, is that a word? It aerially. is. Aerially? It is, Mr. Harrison, you and your vast vocabulary. Yeah, sometimes I don't know if the words I say are. No, I just are say real. it anyway. <laughs> CMU looking to make a couple changes here. They have two subs on at half, so they might be looking to time waste a bit more here. See a lot of different cameras on focusing on this kick from Christian Rodriguez. Oh, we got a player down here in the box. Yeah, this lion's been now coming over to talk to the ref, I believe, so. I don't know what that could have been all about. Looks like he's up and grabbing his face. Yeah, so we'll have a little uh, conference there between the ref and the linesman on what exactly happened as the linesman was probably able to see most things. And I don't know if he would have, no, I don't think we would have caught anything on camera because we, we kind of had it on Christian there thinking that the kick was coming and then all of a sudden we get a, a player down on the CMU side, so I have no idea what. Yeah, ref's looking for somebody, so I imagine he's looking for Camillo. Nope, he's saying play on, no foul. Now Lionsman has to rush over quickly to his line. Christian has to make sure not to put this over top of the net. Yeah, That's it. a beautiful free kick and Ooh. punched away by the keeper. Yeah, Bartell again, that low ground ball that was picked up by the Blazers. And this one goes sky high. Right at the feet of Christian Rodriguez, who's logged some really good minutes here for the Bobcats. Now it's Chupati. He moves it right down Main Street, but intercepted by the Blazers. And we have two Blazers. Looks like they got sandwiched maybe against each other. I have no idea. Yeah. There's, uh, I think, an incidental situation there where all three players were just kind of going for the ball. and. CMU players are happy to go down. Okay, we got the crash. We got the collision. Let's take a look and see what happened here. Yeah. So it was just a yeah, bit of a fall through yeah, by. Yeah, that was just kind of. Draw day. One of those things that happens. CMU are going to be happy to just take a take an injury time here and waste a bit of the clock. It's slowly ticking away. Yeah, we're up at over 81 minutes now. So whether there be some. Extra time knotted onto it or not, I, I don't have any idea. I imagine there'll be five minutes at the box. Yeah, I anything think less than that, and I'll be I'll be shocked if there's oh, less you think than it'll five be, minutes. You think it's gonna be that for sure? Yeah, probably. If the ref is keeping track of the time, yes, I believe. So you're thinking ninety-five, eh? Ninety-five, yeah. Plus or minus one minute. Well, you're usually right on on the button there, buddy. Yeah, so Bobcats, you got to play. The BU's got to play again tomorrow, and so does CMU. Yeah, CMU's got St. B, and the Cats are out in Otterburn. Yeah, so we'll see how the standings shake up after that, because we got a bit of a situation now with CMU potentially taking this game off the Bobcats and maybe winning tomorrow. I don't believe they can overtake the Bobcats, but yeah, let me just take a look at that. What, well, we got a second here. Let's just take a look at that point total and just see what we're dealing with here. I think more so than anything, it'll be more of a a mental preparation game as the CMU will be riding high going into playoffs. Well, yeah, I mean, they'll be beating the Bobcats twice in a row. One, not, one nothing out there and, and could potentially knock them off here. Yeah, two close games. As well, so oh yeah, oh yeah, they don't have. I thought they had the point thing here. So it'll be, I think, unless the Bobcats lose tomorrow and the CMU win tomorrow, and the score stays the same now, then they'll be tied in the standings, and CMU will have the head-to-head -head yeah. win. So, so there you go. Yeah, that's what we're looking at anyway. So we have somebody down here with that follow through from Victor and 
everybody, seeing if there's any extra medical attention needed or if the player will be okay. Looks like he's up under his own power. And be able to walk off needing support of a couple people so hopefully he's okay mm -hmm. I'm not sure oh, of the number sure. wasn't able to see who was down there but looks like he is in some discomfort looks like number maybe number 17 there John Paul who's been a important presence in the middle for the CMU Blazers mm -hmm. oh for sure Taking him over to the medical tent now just to keep everybody posted if whatever happens here. Yeah, so we'll see what happens here after that little stint, a little timeout. Could work in favor of some teams against others. And here's a big towering kick over top of everybody. And Blue Beetle's the first one to get there. Moves over to Frank. A J, J to Victor Andrade. Andrade makes a nice move to gain some yardage for the Bobcats, kicking it all the way down. Camilo Rodriguez in hot pursuit. Puts it out the side, I believe, so that'll be an important throw in rather than a goal kick. So now you can see all the BU players rushing down to make sure that they're playing man to man and are ready to pressure this throw in rather than goal kick. That pressure looks to work as CMU having a tough time clear the ball. Bodies are just blocking that. And that's going to be a corner kick, I believe. Yeah. So there you go. Just the way they, they wrote it up, eh? Yeah. Camillo now, being left footed, is going to be curling this into the goalkeeper here. So he's going to be standing right on his line. So here she comes, low and hard. Puts it out again, so that'll be a, another corner. Yeah, do it all over again here. Camilo's going to make that a bit better. He's going to put that a bit higher. So this, he's trying to score here, I, I would I would imagine. Well, Camilo, he can. Ooh, Off the post, I think. Yeah, that was dangerously, dangerously close to being all knotted up here. Oh, we got somebody with a little push there on. Carter Weave and and the line's been a ref for not doing anything about it. Hey, let's play. Let's play. So play continues, I guess. We'll have a goal kick here as play resumes. Hopefully his temper is cool. Yeah, they're still chatting away over there. Ball's nice and high, and we'll see what the, Frank, yeah, again, just directed it properly with, with his cranium. Ball's played up now, and Victor Andrade has to rush back. Ball stays inside the fence. Yes, it did. We'll have CMU now looking to keep pressure down here for a bit. Give their defenders a bit of a break. There's a throw in. Victor Lamb there for the Bobcats trying to win that showdown. Blue Beetle advances it up. Zach Wood was in the vicinity. It's kicked sky high though. You got Weeb and at all Ali that we were having a little bit of a verbal joust there not long ago, and as fate would have it, those two were going toe to toe down over there in the corner. Yeah, I mean, uh, see me throw, not a foul kick, so this will be a throw in here, I believe. Yep. Yeah. So we got a throw in there. Weaves right in the thick of things again. He's down. Yeah, we'll see. CMU able to get a corner kick out of it, so they're going to be looking to do some damage here. They might just look to time waste as well, so this might be a two-person job. Yeah, we don't need it. 
We got a big corner kick coming up here anyway. This might be a time waste. So they might just pass it in and uh, calling the ref over to measure out the 10 yards that he's allowed. So here comes the kick. There's a header it's right there for the taking. Shabati. Ball should be coming. Ball should be coming right back in, hopefully, here for CMU as they want to just keep pressure in and keep it away from their net. There's a goal kick, I believe, for the Bobcats now who come out unscathed. CMU aren't necessarily looking to score, they're just looking to keep the ball away from their end as much as possible. So Ryder Anthony leans into that one, Wood backing it up. Camilo Rodriguez gaining a little bit more yardage here for Bobcats. That one's tapped up by CMU. All Ali does that as well. There's Romain Francis, Franca Jay, is that, is that his feet? And oh, just saluted Chabati. That's a good defensive effort there to clear it without giving the ball away, but ultimately. Bobcats put it out for a CMU throw, so now they're again they're gonna be looking to take their time. Waste as much time as possible and Yeah, because ref, ref, indi ref indicates five minutes of extra time. Boy, I tell you, <laughs> Dan, you better go buy yourself a lottery ticket, buddy. Yeah, you're right on the money. There's Weave and, and Francis. The well, Gladiators continue to battle on here at HLC Field. And a game that's had a little bit of everything. Yeah, in the grand scheme of things, five minutes is a lot of extra time. You can see the ball can be put into a dangerous spot just like that. And here comes the Bobcats now with Camillo wide open. Now CMU are going to be able to get a kick here and take their time doing it. So here's some more time off the clock. And again, if the Bobcats had the lead, they'd be doing the same thing. Yeah, I guess it's all, all, all strategy-based, right? When you're it's all time and game management. Yeah. Bobcats would be doing the same thing, so. Here's Weeb jumping. To the heavens, and that one's. Oh, 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 quickly. Here comes the ball now being thrown in for a second time. Frank J got it. Now over to Victor Andrade. The Cats have got to go and go now with the Blazers up two to one here. Andrade doing his best to try and spark this, this Bobcat team. The CMU doing their best. I'm going to fall down at any chance I can and waste more time off the clock. Ooh, that's kind of spinning like a top there. Martel's out there to pick it up, and there's a whistle. And this one's got a playoff-like intensity written all over it, basically from start to finish. It's offside call here against Edwin Ali, I would assume rather than the foul on Camillo there, so. Here comes the free kick now. I imagine this will just be a boot down the field, get it out of harm's way if I'm CMU. Zach Wood, the veteran Bobcat. There's a Lee, there's back with Wood. Smack dab into the chest of big Edwin Ali, the skyscraper. Need something big to happen here on the Bobcat side of things here in a hurry as we're getting towards 93 minutes and change now, boy. Yeah, and there's no ball in sight here, so this is going to be some more time off the clock. Yeah, there's still the one that's over there by that nice red car over there. Now we got all kinds of balls out there. Yeah. When it rains, it pours. Fuck, 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 fuck. 
All right, so uh, Blazers throw in. 93 plus minutes played here. Extra time, Bobcats final home game. Zach Wood, Victor Andrade. Chops it up, it's Wood, Weave. It's gonna be a handball, the ref's indicating. Here we go with the free kick now. Appeals for handball, appeals for throw in. 94 minutes. Hey, don't worry about it, right? Right, just ignore it, man. 94. We're thinking 95, and it's about the magic number here. Yeah, we'll see how the game finishes out here. Hopefully, they can finish civilly. <laughs> There's a ball kicked out, so. Despite what CMU is doing and how they're getting rid of the ball, that is, time wasting is, a, is an offense. So the referee could give a yellow card to a team that that's is deliberately was, Yeah, that's what I was going to say, if it's, if it's uh, yeah. Is there some type of a, there's burning up the clock and then there's, oh, this one is right there on the, oh, whistle. Yeah, and. That is a 50-50 ball in the air. That uh, that call could go either way. So you can no call that, or you can call it because the goalie is defenseless in the air, but he did not have the ball. So. Yes, ball. Yes, ball. And there go the final whistles. The CMU Blazers come to Brandon HLC Field. Yeah. They pick up a massive win, 2-1 over the Bobcats. And they take a, an emotional game off the Bobcats now coming into playoffs. So the next time these two teams see each other, if they do, it'll be a, a big rivalry that I imagine will last many more, many more seasons. 6-3 and 2 now are the CMU Blazers after this one. It was a barn burner. And the Cats, they slipped to 7-2 two, and 2 with the loss. Regular season wraps up tomorrow. Bobcats on the road, taking on the Providence Pilots out in Otterburn. Blazers, they battle the St. Boniface Le Rouge. Top four teams in our conference will congregate at CMU. Blazers are hosting the prestigious Final Four tournament next Saturday and Sunday. The champion will move on to the national tournament. Thanks a lot for joining us throughout the season on our Bobcat YouTube channel for MCAC Soccer Action. And again, a big tip of the cap to WCGTV West Band Communications Group for their continued coverage. Dan, great job all season. And we'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.